Hello and welcome to another interview. Today we have got Rasheen Lally. She is the Irish cyclocross uh, like up-and-comer. Um, she's currently racing in U23s because she's still a student at Loughborough Uni, so she represents the Loughborough Lightning team as well. She, we had an amazing chat. We had two amazing chats in a way um, because we started to chat and I realised I wasn't recording, which is horrendous um, bad form on my part, but we caught it before it was too late um but i do allude to that quite heavily in the interview um but yeah she's a great person to talk to we we discuss her career why she does cyclocross um kind of the ironies that that presents um and yeah just a thoroughly good time was had by all um yeah keep looking out for her because she's yeah she's definitely an up-and-comer and I, I hope that she can achieve her ambition of being in the sort of top half and fighting for places in cyclocross races. Um, recording. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. No, we've had a no great problem. chat that you've not heard at home. Um, <laughs> sorry, you're just going to miss that bit out. Um, but yeah, thank you, Rasheen, for, for joining me. Um, it, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, it's a pleasure to, to chat to you and the last 13 minutes have been so insightful um, that people are just never going to hear. Um, so sorry, folks. But anyway, yeah, like, I, I guess let's start at the easy point. Like, what was your route into cycling? What what made you love it? So initially, um, I followed my older brother into triathlon when we were really young. Um, and most triathlon courses when you're like a youth are on field so it's quite similar to cyclocross um and sort of as I was going through triathlon I sort of realized I don't really like swimming I don't really like running so sort of what am I doing in this sport so my parents then took me to my local league cyclocross um and I just like instantly fell in love with it like the mud everything like it was just yeah love at first sight for sure um and it was like the first thing that I was I was better than my older brother at which when you're a kid is like that's a huge step like being better than your siblings it's always always a bit of a competition so yeah I think I just started and never looked back. Yeah I find that cool though it kind of the love for it grew from participation because I know like speaking for myself my love for cyclocross came from watching it um, and you know when I was the age like guess 18 I was having to watch on like dodgy internet streams that were you know maybe not entirely 100% legal um but is yeah did you ever get any enjoyment of cyclocross from watching you know were you sat at weekends trying to watch what the pros were doing or was it just purely I'm racing this is what I want to do yeah so I think like I really enjoyed watching the older girls race as well. Um, we never really watched cyclocross on like TV or on like a laptop when I was really young. Um, but Anna Kay, she comes from the same region that I do. Um, and she used to have so many battles with another girl who's unfortunately not in the sport anymore, Rihanna Stoves. And I remember watching the two of them battle when I was younger and just thinking like, I can't wait until I get a bit older and there's more girls racing and like, we then got our own race like and I can just compete alongside girls so I remember being really inspired by them and just like I think as well like the way in which they battled so hard and like they were proper pushing each other but then at the end of the race they give each other a hug and like that they would like they would just be best friends afterwards and I think that was like that was a real defining moment for me because that's how I like to compete like I am quite an aggressive rider like on the cross bike like I will I will fight for my line but as soon as the race finishes I'm like I'm down to be friends like let's have a chat like let's have a laugh so I think definitely that comes from watching regional races when I was younger. Oh wow and how is it to, to actually race against Anna Kay after years of watching her and be like oh, I wish I could be doing that <laughs> and now you are doing that and she's yeah. one of your rivals. Yeah I think it's really cool I don't think Anna would consider me a rival at all she's just sort of like speeds off into the distance um but yeah Anna's so sweet and she's she just has so much help to give other people like before a race like she's good at like keeping you chill and being like okay like, have you seen this line like this is a really good line um and I think that like 
she doesn't sometimes when you go to Belgium and you're like looking at all like these pro riders and they're all super serious and then you just see Anna and she's like hi like how are you doing mm -hmm. um and I think like that's so nice like to have someone that's just so like down to earth and yeah so I think I'd love to be like com properly competing with her at some point but she's just she's just in another league at the minute yeah that's fair like I kind of I I would probably be a little devious with it though because I'd be like oh yeah take this like it's really good and then <laughs> you know sit behind you watch you go down the completely wrong track and then like cut the corner yeah um, I think you definitely do get people like that that like like to play a little bit of mind games before um but you, yeah you do get some really genuine people that like that just want to see you do well which is like that's so nice and that's like that's what makes the sport it is like yeah those really kind people yeah I guess it, it's you know you should all be trying to help each other be the best because then if you win it makes that victory more sweet because you've yeah. beaten the best um and yeah like obviously um looking at your palmares um and your race achievements recently like I see there's a lot across um yeah it, it, you know it comes across very strongly that you're you're a cross rider through and through almost with you know occasions uh i know i will let people into knowing what we talked about before this <laughs> recorded properly like you said you're not good with the heat um oh. and there's it, it's kind of ironic or i mean it's fitting at least that the sport you enjoy is the one that's done in the winter and the cold and the mud um it's just awkward because it's the one that you know during the school year during the academic year is when you're going to be busiest anyway um yeah. how do you find the kind of mixing of study and sport yeah so like obviously competing for Loughborough Lightning um I'm part of like the Loughborough Cycling Academy and what we get like out of that Cycling Academy is like I think people don't understand until you're in it how good the Cycling Academy actually is the amount that they do for us in helping us organise our own lives outside of cycling and how that can sort of line up with studying, social life, training, like so much is taken out of my own hands and it just makes life so much easier because I don't have to think, oh God, how am I going to fit in getting, like getting this essay written and actually I kind of want to go out and see my friends. Like I just speak to my coach and I say like, okay, look, I'm struggling a little bit and he goes, okay, that's fine. Like, let me take that I'll sort it out I'll speak to like all of these different people and then plan it and come back to you and then everything's dealt for me and I just have to kind of go and do it go and do it and then like it's just it's just easy like obviously there's times where it's difficult and you're like super stressed but the amount of support that we get from the cycling academy just makes life so much easier yeah does that mean your coaches are more pastoral than coaches if that makes sense like they look after the the holistic person, I guess, yeah, like so, the whole person versus the the sports person. Yeah, so I'm like I'm coached by Paddy Harrison, um, and I mean he's an absolute saint to deal with all of us, like because we all have deadlines at the same time. So when we're stressed, he's stressed. Um, so yeah, like Paddy is very good with like knowing me as a person and knowing what works for me and like figuring out everything that makes me me and mm. like only a small part of that is cycling I think this is like it's been a real eye-opener for me and that actually cycling isn't your entire life there's more more to my life than cycling and by making sure all the like pieces fit together makes everything so much easier and that's I think that's made me a better cyclist because there's less stresses in my life and there's less like me trying to fit cycling into the rest of my life whereas now it all kind of like fits together nicely if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely um it's kind of yeah it, it's nice to have that wider perspective of going yeah yeah cycling is important but lots of things are important and it's nice to have yeah. that do you reckon then uh, that in a way studying keeps you grounded because it gives you something other than cycling to focus on and you're not having you know because I know if I was in uh, you know if I was ever at that level where I could be full-time or you know could afford to focus just on cycling 
I would be ridiculously like you know over the top about it as well yeah I think like if I'd gone straight out of my A-levels and just gone full-time cycling I don't think I would have coped because I before coming to university I didn't really have sort of the tools to be able to reframe when things don't go well I'd sort of like I'd have a bad race and I'd spend all week thinking about how awful it was like oh I did this wrong I did that wrong like I'm just such a bad cyclist like and sort of working with the cycling academy and sports psychologists sort of has really helped me figure out like how to go okay well this wasn't the result I wanted but I did all of these things right it was just a bad day like or Mm -hmm. this is going to help me like I've learned from this and that means I've got to do this kind of training to then make sure that doesn't happen again and I think that has really helped me and that like I can kind of continue to go about everything and I study psychology at university so I do some sports psychology stuff so I think definitely in terms of learning that has really really helped me in terms of progressing as a cyclist and I feel like when I finish uni I could potentially go full-time and like I'd be okay because I have all of these tools now but yeah I think without the cycling academy and without sort of learning those sports psychology like tools I guess Mm. has really helped me in terms of progressing yeah. Is that potentially also a as much as it is a blessing that you're studying psychology can it also be a curse because you're like if you hear someone like a sports psychologist use a technique and you're like I know this technique why are you using this one on me? Yeah, I think definitely like I'll be sat in like a sports psychology lecture and they'll be like, OK, like this isn't what you should do as an athlete. And I'm like, oh, OK, I do that. <laughs> and I think like sometimes you're sort of sat there and you're like, I feel like this lecture has been written about me, um, <laughs> which is like it's quite daunting. And I think like that's definitely like the curse side of it. But I think so we work with Brandon and Alex, our sports psychologists for the team. Um, and I think they're really good in kind of they understand I study psychology so they don't try sort of like explain my degree to me they just (laughs) kind of go like okay like this is what we think is going to help you like do you want to try it or do you want to try something else and I think that option is really helpful um and I mean like they know their stuff so I trust them wholeheartedly yeah yeah it's kind of wild like like at at least they're kind of yeah they're willing to give you that option and not yeah. I guess patronize you because it would be very easy to do that um in some scenarios but obviously yeah it, it definitely not advised um <laughs> yeah kind of everything written about you is like it's like your own version of the Truman Show uh, yeah. if you get that reference because I know you're you're a little younger so it's like <laughs> uh, do these touchstones still apply nowadays um <laughs> but yeah um I guess one thing we haven't discussed is um, the recent hill climb for, for the Bucks competition, um, which for international viewers, if there are any, is the British University and Colleges Sports, I think. I'm g- yeah. So. Yeah, I'm usually good on acronyms, but it's been a while since I was at uni. <laughs> I, I did one year and did the road race and the hill climb. Um, the road race was in the Vale of Beaver, which is actually not too far from either of us um except they they were re the hill in in harvey so it became like almost like a cobbled climb yeah and yeah that wasn't fun um and if anyone slowed up in front of you that was it for you um i got cramp like three laps in just as the uh, just as the lead women were catching me as well so i was like <laughs> oh, this is time for me to stop um just because of how it was um and the hill climb was in the Peak District somewhere where someone was selling manure like halfway up and like just had bags of it right on their front doorstep as you rode past. Not fun. But yeah, how's are you doing much of that? And what's it like to, I presume because you're part of the Loughborough team, you're going to be towards the head of a race than where I was finding myself. So what's <laughs> that like? Yeah, so I think like Bucks to me is just like, that's like a fun event. Like there's... I don't find any pressure on myself like it's Bucks is never really something that I go like at the start of the season like oh yeah like I want to do really well at Bucks so it's just like 
it's a fun thing to kind of try something new um like the hill climb I'm sort of training through that because I've got like big races coming up um mm. so it was just a bit of fun but I think the road race there's definitely like pressure wearing sort of the African violet jersey um because we just have so many numbers like we're kind of expected to do something oh yeah um, I bet that's like a huge target on your back as well oh, like yeah. everyone wants to beat the Loughborough team because they're they're the sports team like you know yeah. <laughs> they're the sport um, uni they're the ones to beat it was my first year of Dean Buck's road race I think we had Loughborough had double the amount of any like Loughborough made up half the start sheet for the women's oh, <laughs> so we we sat down together all of the girls and went okay like I'm gonna us two are gonna watch this rider and anything that rider does we're following them so like the girls were screaming at us like everyone was everyone hated us in that race but I could imagine and like we loved it because it was so much fun like we had total control of the race and like who we wanted to send up the road went up the road and like it was just a really fun experience to be so dominant in a race but yeah I think everyone hated us and fair I, enough I mean I really hope there was someone from Loughborough watching me and going let's mark him and yeah. you know as soon as I get dropped they have to drop too that would be yeah. amazing and <laughs> I could accidentally backdoor them <laughs> um but yeah like yeah it's kind of crazy the the strength and depth that Loughborough obviously has is it's kind of wild isn't it um but you said you've got big races coming up what is there in in your future um to look forward to I guess so this this month is actually filled with world cups I'm hoping um so this weekend I'm heading out to Belgium to do a super prestige C1 and a world cup in Dendermonde um and then I'm hoping to do well and then off the back of that we've got Dublin world cup in a couple of weeks time so I'm hoping to be selected um to be able to compete in that because that was just such an amazing experience last year so I'm hoping that's my racing for November yeah and I guess that's a, another question is like because you declared for Ireland like do you find it like is the selection process for cross races quite easy I assume for the Belgian races it would be slightly easier I don't know how easy it is but it would be easier than being selected for for Dublin because that's in Ireland obviously <laughs> like everyone and their mum is going to want to be in that race um yeah so so what's the selection process like yeah so I think what I personally really love about Cycling Ireland and the off-road commission is that they're so incredibly clear about what you need to do and what they need to see from you to be selected um okay. they often publish so kind of like these are selection races or this is like a criteria of what we want to see you do and if you do that and if we have the budget then you'll go so like for me then it, it makes planning kind of easy because I'm like okay I need to do these races and I need to do well in them and then hmm. off the back of that hopefully I can go so yeah gosh but uh, does that increase the pressure perhaps like if they go oh yeah this I don't know this C2 race I'll just use Cornell as an example because I can name it. Um, you know, if you if you do well at Cross Clonmel, we'll pick you. You know, and if you're outside the top ten, well, you know, try again next race or next year or whatever. Like, does that increase the pressure for those races? Yeah, I guess so. I think everyone, because obviously with it being so published and everyone can access that, like everyone knows what's going on. Everyone knows we're going to be like racing really hard and everyone's going to be like peaking for it so I guess there is that pressure but I think that makes it a bit nicer in that everyone knows and you know it's going to be a hard race and I think that's better than kind of like oh okay she's beat me in this race but was she peaking for it or was mm. she not like you know everyone's going to be on their top form for the selection races so yeah but do you ever look at that and go oh I hope like no one else like obviously I know Anna Kay does Clonmel you know and I know she brought Yenta over um but do you ever go out uh, I hope none of the other cyclocross reds attempted to go over because then you know they'd probably beat me that makes it harder to get a top 10 or to get the, the qualification 
Yeah, I guess they don't. So the way that the criteria works is they don't say like, OK, you have to come, you have to win this race to go. Um, they will like they'll look at the race and how you perform within it. Um, so like, I guess like if the whole like Circle Cross Reds teams came over, like, yeah, OK, they're going to they're going to block out the podium. But I could have the race of my life in fourth. And like, that doesn't matter, like, because I've still done a great race and they'll be there watching. So I like I would hope that I'd still get selected, but yeah. Well, I think that I'd, I guess I'd, I think that's a very enlightened way of doing it because you know you could do it in a very raw number crunching way, which you know data driven, which a lot of I like guess yeah a lot of organisations like to do that and say that they they just follow the data, but data doesn't always tell the whole story. Um, I don't think that's controversial to say, but, you know, some people might not like that I say that, but data doesn't take into account humans and yeah. how we work. Um, so I think that that's remarkably enlightened. and uh, I'm glad they're doing that that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think like. Because sometimes you look at results sheets and you're like, oh, like why? Like a race that you've not been at and you're like, why is so and so all the way down the results sheet? And then when you realise, OK, they like they snapped their chain on the start line or they punctured and you've seen them running with their bike like that's why they're all the way down there and I think like being at races is such a key way to sort of see how people are actually doing because you can watch them and you can see where their strengths are and see if anything goes wrong really yeah absolutely and um, you've kind of touched on elements of this already um but like how do you measure success because like Cycling is a tough sport and no matter what the rider, you will spend more time not winning a race than you will winning a race. Um, even, you know, like Mariana Voss or Anamik, like they're not winning every single race and their percentage will be under 50. So like, how do you measure success for yourself? How do you go, this is what I want to do. This is what I, what I want to get out of the season. Yeah, I think when I was younger, I was definitely like so focused on winning. I was like, OK, like I want to win my local league. I want to have a top 10 overall in the national series. I think like coming to uni and sort of reframing how I look at success was definitely really important for me. And as well for my mental health, like because like you say, you're not going to win every race. You're going to have bad days. Um, so I think now something that my dad has always said to me and I didn't really get until a couple of years ago was performance, not result. And that mm -hmm. success should come from the performance and you could come last. And like that was the best I could do on the day. Like you can't control what other riders do. Like so the results are out of your hands. Like you can you can go as fast as you can, but that's as fast as you can. So I think. For me, it's definitely taking like stripping it all back again and going, OK, what can I do to be the best rider I can be? Um, so, yeah, so I think obviously like I still have some like results and outcome goals that I want to achieve. Like, but I think definitely coming back to being like, OK, like I want to get as many UCI points as I can this year. Like what races can I do to be right at the front of those races or like. I don't know, like back to training and what like okay this power number is lower than the others what can i do to improve this power number which is going to improve my racing mm. yeah of course like uci points come from so many like some people go out to to like c2s in spain and just farm them there and the other people you know rely on the world cups because they're obviously higher tariff but harder to come by as well um <laughs> although i think like i've worked out the other day that there was a race at like the Waterloo one, like maybe last year was better than winning a C2 because like literally no matter who, you, like as long as you got round and got points from it, you'd have done better than winning a C2 because there were so few people on the start list, which is yeah. kind of weird, but I guess that's how it is. Um, but yeah, it's really, really interesting to hear like how that reframing has helped you. Um, and certainly glad it has like i guess yeah the only questions are we know obviously what your sort of short short term future looks like in terms of racing what's the the long-term goals 
I guess we could even go career goals and also like how far into uni are you and therefore have you started looking at post uni cycling and and what are the plans on that front as well yeah I think so I'm in my final year at the minute um so I only have a little bit left unfortunately um and everyone says when you come to Loughborough you never leave um and I am considering a master's so I think I'll be following (laughs) that I'm not leaving Loughborough just yet um and I think the way that it allows me to sort of balance training and traveling like no one said like you can't go to Belgium this weekend like that like I email my lectures and they're like oh good luck like let me know how you get on rather than well you're missing lectures please don't go um (laughs) so I think like that I'm definitely keen to stay within that Loughborough environment to keep me progressing through cycling um because I can take the time off and sort of do the racing that I want whereas if I went into a job after uni I feel like I can't take as much time off as I take off at the minute through uni um I think when I was younger if you'd asked me what like my career goals would be I'd be like yeah I want to be world champion um and I think now that I've gotten older and sort of like a bit of perspective I know I'm probably not going to be world champion like I've never I've I've never made it to be national champion I've made it on a national podium once so I think like I want to be more consistent at that top level in terms of like a national level like I want to be at the front of national races both cyclocross and road and be like I want to be one of those girls that you look at on the start sheet and be like oh she's racing like what's she gonna do Mm. um so I think like really make a name for myself within British and Irish cycling for both cross and road um and then competing like at world cups European champs world champs like and not just like competing like actually like fighting for positions and like in that sort of top half of that top level racing Mm. yeah that makes a lot of sense and that's quite a a nice way of looking at things and and again framing your ambitions um I'd always be worried like when you said about your lecturers being like oh okay like good luck and all that like I'd be worried if in that situation that like am I disruptive like are they glad I'm gone um obviously I don't expect that of you but um my my mind would always twist any positive well wishes um into that sort of darker area and go (laughs) is there something a bit more going on here Um, I think Loughborough lecturers are just so used to getting emails being like yeah I'm doing this sport I'm doing that sport I'm not coming sorry yeah yeah that's probably an occupational hazard isn't it yeah um so yeah how can people um keep up with you in terms of seeing what races you're doing and that sort of thing not keep up with you in the literal sense obviously um (laughs) but yeah like um so i mainly i'm fairly regular poster on instagram i don't really have twitter or anything don't understand how to use it um i wouldn't no No, i'm having a bit of a break from there aside from the, the socials for this channel i don't really use twitter at the moment um confuses me too much I'll stick to Instagram I know what I'm doing there um and I do like I almost pride myself in being quite honest on my Instagram in terms of how races have gone like Mm. I like to keep posting even when races haven't gone well because people do like people are watching people like to know um so yeah I do like post on my stories kind of like what races I'm going to and then like a bit of a debrief as like an actual post afterwards oh lovely well yeah all that's left is to to wish you the best of luck at Dendermonde um, and at the super prestige that precedes it um this will probably go out after um so really well done that was a great result thank you um, whatever <laughs> the result is I have no idea obviously um <laughs> and yeah obviously thank you so much for your time today thank you so much for having me as well